in a Sibir Dunele Gabri Choshins. Dingi Tarba. Okay, so where we are is actually in this uh, uh, section on a being of the small scope. Yes, yeah, so this is um, referring to this uh, verse of ours. This is the verse uh, four. Yeah, we have looked at that. Um, so, so what is such a such a person of the uh, the middling scope? Yeah? So it's characterized here in the verse and then in the commentary that Gesha is using here. And so first of all, uh, we have here somebody who is uh, concerned with uh, all the sufferings of existence or of samsara. Yeah? So this person is uh, uh, turning its back on all of uh, the suffering of samsara and wants to get liberated from this, wants to escape from the suffering of samsara. So that's the, uh, the attitude of, of, the, of such a person. This is kind of the, the characteristics of attitude. And so having this kind of attitude that he wants to get out of samsara, turn back on samsara, escape from there, uh, what kind of practice does such a person do? So this person uh, would uh, 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 turn away from any kind of negative actions, yeah? would kind, kind of restrain itself or bind itself with regard to negative actions, negative karma. And uh, so what, what, does, what does this come down to? It comes down to ethical discipline. So that's the main practice here. And so this, uh, this practice would be uh, uh, especially expressed in one of the uh, vows of uh, uh, Pratimoksha of individual liberation. Yes, there's many different types of uh, Pratimoksha vows. Uh, so biding by these kind of restraints of the Pratimoksha vows, by this ethical discipline, this person is practicing to turn away from the uh, negative actions. And that uh, this kind of practice becomes then the characteristic of application or again of practice of such a person. So that's the second one. So, so uh, the person would engage into this kind of ethical discipline on the basis on the first characteristic of attitude. And then with these two uh, uh, characteristics as a basis, you have this attitude characteristic and application uh, uh, characteristic, the person would aim at uh, 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 the pacification of all the uh, true sufferings and true origins. Uh, and so this state of having pacified that is the state which is called uh, gone beyond sorrow or in other words nirvana. Yeah? So that's what the, what the person is, is aiming for. 
So that's then uh, uh, the aim or the result of this whole practice. So that's the third characteristic of such a person, the characteristic of the results. So we have three characteristics here, uh, one of attitude, one of application, one of result. And when, the, when these three that we have just talked about come together, then uh, for one person, and that person is a person of the living scope. So, ตะเนจัวเนตุกุญปันเจตโซเชงกอลามีทับเจตโซเชงเกพอตินเดกิตินเตงกังซาตะเดเดเบกังซาเดกายินสนะชุมานอลชุบัสตันเบชุมานอว
or of a spiritual uh, vision than the, uh, the, uh, the person of the small scope. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty established. So again, why is it not then the great being? Uh, so it is not the great being but because while it is aiming at overcoming samsara and getting liberated and uh, attaining uh, uh, nirvana and the state beyond sorrow and pacifying all the two origins to cessation, he is not doing that for the limitless sentient beings, but for him or herself alone. So in, in so far, uh, this person uh, is doing excellent uh, practice, but it is uh, only of a, a middling scope, of a middling vision. Uh, so it is uh, lower to the great scope that is working for all the sentient beings. So, Sajekuela Uh, um, uh, so, or actually, the text is now looking at uh, one of the expressions in our uh, uh, verse here. So, this is verse 4. So, this is in our case the third line in the English. Yeah? It says, and avoiding destructive actions. Yeah? So, uh, destructive actions is fine, uh, negative actions are uh, actions of negativity, something like that. So, the point is that uh, this uh, phrase here, uh, or this, this expression, destructive actions, uh, uh, needs to be understood in context here. And so, this uh, is especially expressed by uh, uh, Kadampa Geshe by the name of Sharawa. So, he uh, points out what this wants to say here. When he says here, in this context of the middling being, avoiding destructive actions, so normally when we talk about negative actions or destructive actions and then an ethics that is avoiding such negative or destructive actions, then normally we talk about the destructive actions being the 10 non-virtuous actions and the ethics being an ethics that abandons the 10 non-virtuous actions. So here, this is not our context. Yeah? Our context is not just saying that this person here is avoiding the 10 non-virtuous actions, but with regard to any karma that brings about any type of rebirth in samsara, in other words, any kind of contaminated action, and contaminated karma, is here to be understood uh, in this uh, phrase or, or this expression of destructive actions. Yeah? So normally, when we talk about uh, destructive actions or negative actions, then this is referring to that which what causes rebirth in the three lower realms or literally the evil gone realms. Uh, so here in our case, 
it is talking about any kind of karma that brings a, birth, a rebirth anywhere in samsara. Yeah? Any samsaric state caused by this type of karma, that kind of karma, uh, that this person, this kind of action, that person uh, would uh, uh, avoid. So that includes therefore also that karma that would lead to a rebirth in the three upper realms, or in the in the in the happy migrations, and in, in, in the happy realms of uh, humans and gods and so forth. Yeah? So also that uh, is here a karma, an action, uh, although it has this kind of high rebirth as a result. That this is a reaction that this person wants to avoid and is seen here in this context of the middle scope as a destructive action. Yeah? So that would cause a uh, human and uh, and God rebirth is seen here as destructive action because it is still contaminated action, contaminated karma, bringing as a result no more than a rebirth within samsara, and that's exactly what this person wants to get away from. One what does not want to be uh, reborn in samsara anymore. So, in a in a different way, this can be expressed uh, that this person especially wants to get rid of the true origin origins, and so here. The two origins are actually karma and afflictions. Yeah? So karma is right in there. So uh, actually this person wants to get rid of all of that. He wants to get rid of the destructive actions, which is this karma that is a true uh, origin, but also of the afflictions that are the two origins. So all this destructiveness and distance uh, that uh, uh, generates contaminated actions and rebirth within samsara, all of that is included here in uh, the avoiding destructive actions. Ah,这样，他从那开始，快点过来呀！给，给了一年多，没给了一年多，快点过来呀！给牛毛一年多，给汤些，等到干不得了，特别累，是得拿了了，嘴巴热，现在真是吓了我孙子了。他得了，多别
Panja Sunga Jada, Lam Lava Sunga Yamni Jagati, give a chimbo get you. Give a chimbo Kansaji in a Mikijum Sungere. Ah, then a letter and Yoma Pound Shagere. Ah, then Lam Lava Sunga Yamni Jagere. Did the la two lambs lavias. Yenea give a chungu negosu. So kind Quranga turned on your jade, Hamigi digged it to Tabjaga Zojigarma. Or the Gunung Samba Tendejigi, Gundulana Chedadi, Tonichumuchagir. Drinking a so so Nyanga Tabjaga Zojigarma. Near Ranjan to Chigi Vaindu, then in Jinis a child. What is that? Chimbe Gasu Nyamni de Chigi Arte in a Kunung Samba de Yamar, Kunung Samba de Sinjin Tamje Sajera Sinjin Tamje Devada de Vigudan Demarjuji, said Sammy Shees on a Sultan. Rimbaranga Chamba de Ninjig Samba Kundulane. Those got drawn into Chimbo Sajikan drawing. Chimbo said the Kur Chimbo. Tie a single chicken, my little cool line with it, then chimbo slugger. And a cool amidi chimbo inside this chimbo slugger. Oh, great. Um, uh, so in the context of uh, uh, the, uh, the small being or the being of the small store, we heard that uh, the main practice of such a person is the ethical discipline that uh, abandons the ten non virtuous actions. And so now here with the person of the, uh, the, the middling scope or the middle capacity, uh, the main practice is uh, that on the basis of having as the main object of abandonment, karma and afflictions, this person practices mainly as an imperfect Yeah. So, so we can make this statement. At the same time, uh, we have to be uh, aware that uh, also a being of the great scope is training in these very practices. Yeah? So also somebody of the great scope of the Mahayana uh, would also pra uh, pra uh, practice an ethical discipline that, uh, that abandons the ten non virtuous actions and would also practice the three higher trainings and also would pra practice in order to abandon the, uh, the contaminated karma and afflictions and so forth. Yeah? So the difference here comes in the motivation of how this, uh, these practices uh, are, are practiced. So actually from the point of view of the, uh, uh, of the Mahayana also, the, the great scope also practicing these practices, these practices are called common practices or practices that we, means the Mahayana, have in common with uh, 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 practitioners of other levels. So the difference here comes from the uh, motivation of the, of the individual practitioner. So if you have somebody from the small scope, so this person is engaging in practice, so in this case, especially in the ethnic discipline of any autonomous just actions, in order to attain the bliss and happiness of gods and of humans, yeah, to have this happy migration of these happy states. And somebody uh, from the middle scope is practicing here, and especially the three uh, uh, higher tra uh, trainings, uh, uh, in order to um, uh, 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 attain uh, a state beyond sorrow to, to actualize nirvana. And that keeps him in the, the middle section or the middle vision because it does this for his own benefit, yeah? for, in order to attain his or her uh, nirvana. So different from that, uh, the, the person of the great scope does very well this very practices that we have just described, but the motivation is completely different. Yeah? Because the motivation is what uh, is the vast thing or what, what, what brings the whole thing into a, a great scope or makes this person a great being, because this person is uh, practicing all these practices for the sake of all limitless sentient beings, all meaning without exception, without leaving anyone out, for all sinning beings, this person is uh, engaging in these practices and then, uh, more practices like that. And so, in other words, the motivation here of that person is especially based on love and compassion, uh, as we know it, or as it is indicated also in the four immeasurables. Yeah? So, the states that are already talked about there. 
so, but anyway, the, uh, the, the main uh, basis here for such a person is great love and great compassion. So again, this includes, this is love and compassion that includes all sinning beings without exception, all limitless sinning beings. And so therefore, the responsibility that this person takes on in his or her motivation or, or, or vision is vast, is, is, is in encompassing uh, a, a, a vast mass of, 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 of recipients or of, of uh, beings to be benefited. And therefore, the vision is great, and therefore, this is a great being. Hi. So coming back to this uh, person of the, the, the middling uh, scope, the middling vision, so this is somebody who is aiming at liberation for his or her own sake. Yeah? So in, in order to do that, uh, 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 this person engages as, uh, as a main practice in the three higher trainings. And why does, it, uh, does this person engage in the three higher trainings? In order to attain liberation for their own sake. So such a person, such a practitioner of, of, of that level is called a being of the middle scope or a middling being. And <laughs> The <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this kind of person of the middle scope then uh, uh, can uh, have uh, different types. Yeah? You can uh, make a division of such a person. So this can be either uh, a hero person or it can be a Pratika Buddha person. Yeah? So there's different personalities practicing this middle scope. And what they are uh, uh, mainly uh, engaging in is a practice uh, uh, or an exploration or a practice of the Four Noble Truths and also the 12 links of dependent arising. So the 12 links of dependent arising would be uh, practiced by, uh, by uh, uh, meditating on what is called the forward pervasion, or, the, or not, not pervasion, the forward uh, uh, process and the uh, reverse process of the 12 links. Yeah, you can go from 1 to 12 and then you can also meditate from 12 to 1. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
so I guess it says that there's also a, a great many differences that you can make amongst those who are beings on the middle scope. So first of all, you can talk about such a middling being on the path of accumulation of a middling being or on the path of preparation on the, uh, of a middling being on the path of seeing of a middling being or to be on the path of meditation of a middling being or on the path of normal learning means being an arhat or a foe destroyer. Yeah? Also that resultant state uh, is still uh, a being of the middle scope. Yeah, so you can have these different types already, which on which different uh, paths they are. But actually, you can even talk about uh, being of the middle scope that is uh, not on any of these paths. Yeah, so in kind of a phase before those paths, before they have entered into the path, they can already be people who are beings of the middle scope. Because in order to be a being of the middle scope, you uh, have to have a uh, uh, that this attitude that is uh, mainly looking for your own liberation and wants to get free from samsara. Yeah, so that's all what you need. And you can have something like that and not yet have, not yet have entered a path. Yeah, you can have these kind of attitudes, but you're not yet on a path. So you have uh, beings of the middle scope that are on the five paths and then even those that are before that, in the phase before that. So... Um, so then uh, further on, the text is making here a distinction uh, into the middle being that is a small middle being and the middling middle being and the great middle being. <laughs> and so the small middle being would be such a person that is a middling being but has not entered into the path yet. And so that person is already a middling being, is already aiming at liberation, mostly get free of samsara, but cannot do more as a practice than an ethical discipline that abandons the ten non virtuous actions. Yeah? So that person has the attitude of a middling being, but cannot do more practice than that. And so that would be then uh, somebody who is not yet on a path and is uh, 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 referred to as a small middling being. Ben Voltaire, also, I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt. There's just, there's a couple of questions in the chat and I didn't know if okay. you wanted to look at them now or save them till the end. Again, look at the TV cash unit. Okay, guess we can do we can do them uh, always directly. So I have here two questions, is that it? Yeah? Yes, These two. Yes, it's just the two. So the first one. Okay, so Laura Kavina is asking, is non erroneous dharma a correct understanding of emptiness? Right, that's the first one. Maybe just do that first. Uh, uh, Tomba yeah. So this, uh, in this context, uh, when we say that a, a person of the middling scope is a person that is accomplishing uh, a non-erroneous dharma, 
this is not uh, necessarily connected to a realization of emptiness. Uh, it is just expressing that this person uh, has a very special uh, uh, motivation or uh, attitude, which is this attitude to attain liberation, yeah, to get rid of some sorrow, to turn away from sorrow and to attain this liberation. So that in itself is already amazing and is outstanding, is a very excellent attitude and makes this dharma uh, that is practiced here a non-erroneous dharma because of this uh, attitude. And, uh, but then that's not enough to have just added you, so something is practiced. So if we have here somebody who, for example, the, the person that we were just talking about, the small middling being, uh, that it has a capacity only to abandon the ten non-virtuous actions, but has this attitude that, uh, that this is practiced in order to get liberation from samsara. So uh, because of this uh, uh, attitude, uh, this attitude being an erroneous, and then to abandon the non-virtuous action is, uh, is definitely excellent, it's definitely non-erroneous as well. So in the combination, this motivation with this practice, alone already makes this a person that is accomplishing a non-erroneous dharma. So this person is probably by no means able to realize emptiness or directly or in any way. Uh, but nevertheless, just to have this attitude to want to be liberated from samsara and to practice whatever you can, in this case, the ten of virtuous actions, that in itself is already enough to make it a non-erroneous dharma. So in, in short, it doesn't have to be a realization of emptiness. Well, then you do. So what's the next one? What if one wishes to attain liberation for themselves and the, a family, but not all sentient beings without exception? Is that a person of the middling scope still? What if one wishes to attain liberation for themselves and their family? So I guess the question comes because this is not just for one person, but for several people. So where are we then? You know, it's not for all beings, but it's also not just for yourself. So what about that? But it's still talking about liberation and not uh, Buddhahood. Okay, so what if somebody wants to uh, attain liberation for several people, which is themselves and their family friends? Why not for all? Is that still middle, middle in scope? So, as we talked about this, we can give you the Taba Tobiela Rangdundu, Rangdund Chikula, Namne Chiguris. Soso soso chipu mares yin soso tan soso nami soso pama soso pingya ti ti tenzu sama kare um um tawa tobila kon nami ji yures yin semji tamji ke che mares ra ti ni ni ba mi ni ba dok semji tamji ke che mares ti mi ting re be mi mi che mi che mare ハイエベスケミヤサンタマドバジャルミニュンシェジサンタンジェデネジタタルバタヨゲサンタンジェニャミジェナヤコシュラルバスティハレバルバスポタルバトヨゲサンタンゴドデヤコシュラルバスうん
So to have this kind of very kind of uh, 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 virtuous mind or, 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 or big vision that you're going to bring yourself and also several other peoples to this state of liberation, because it is definitely a mind that is aiming at liberation. Yeah? So first of all, so that's already excellent. And then even uh, including some, uh, some other people. So we have to be clear that uh, in general, when we kind of uh, step out of the Dharma context and we just talk about uh, parents that have the, uh, the attitude that they want to bring up their ch uh, children such that they can uh, kind of learn something, get a good education, and then uh, we can be successful in society also in the sense that they are kind of influencing society in a positive way and that they are not bringing harm to society and so on. So in this way also they're raising their children. And that's very excellent, no? We would have to agree on that. That this is a very excellent attitude uh, of parents to bring up their children so that they turn out well for themselves and also for society. They don't bring harm to society but actually uh, bring something to society. So that's very wonderful. So here we go, even way beyond that, this person here is actually aiming at liberation yeah, for himself or herself and also for uh, other people. Yeah. Mm. So if it uh, goes back to the example of the uh, of the family situation, so if uh, if uh, if uh, parents would uh, uh, do all kind of uh, dharma actions uh, uh, in order for the, the children to, to, to turn out well or to, to develop well, like let's say they sponsor pujas or something, it's for for that for that very uh, uh, aim uh, 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 recitations and so forth. Yeah, so that's 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 wonderful. And also, uh, on the other hand, if the children then also uh, kind of uh, uh, relate to their parents by saying, uh, I, I want to kind of uh, support them also, they shall be protected, they shall uh, have a, a long life, they shall be healthy and so forth. And for that reason, I also kind of sponsor pujas or actually I do my own recitations and dedicate it for that. That's very wonderful. Huh? That's very, a, a very positive attitude. <laughs> Yakshi so the, uh, the, the point is that uh, when we ac accept that this is something uh, uh, wonderful, something good, something positive, then the next thing is that there is no end to how much you can increase the positive. So there's no end to something being positive because uh, uh, the, the, the most positive thing or the, 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 the best thing would be that you're practicing for all sentient beings, but like limitless sentient beings without exception. So that would be limitlessly good. So good can be increased into limitless. Yeah? But it starts right there yeah, in these examples. So these things are good that you kind of try to, 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 to raise your children so that they are, are turning out well for themselves and for the society and you can practice karma for the parents and so forth. So this is good. And then you can increase this to ever higher levels of goodness. And here we have now somebody who is aiming a liberation, a complete liberation from samsara, destroying his samsara and attaining freedom. That's amazing. This is unheard of. This is incredibly rare on the planet. Yeah? So normally the whole planet is only focusing on certain kind of uh, situations or improvements with regard to this life. This person is way beyond that and is trying to get out of some sorrow altogether. Amazing positive attitude. Very, very powerful. Very, very positive uh, um, uh, practice. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, 
<laughs> so yes, it says if somebody is a is a practitioner of the small scope, it, it really practices like that. That's 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 a good practice. And if somebody is is practicing like somebody of the, of the middle scope, that's even more wonderful. And if somebody is practicing like somebody from the from the from the great scope with regard to all limitless beings, and this is kind of unmeasurable, kind of amazingly good, you know, un un unbelievably good, you know, like sky kind of thing. So so again, I guess the point was that there is no end in the limit of goodness. Another something. <laughs> So I, I, I said again, the baby the question was also a little bit like simply to categorize somebody. Like so if 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 this person is actually not like you said that a person of the middle scope is only aiming at liberation for him or herself. So it's only doing uh, one's own benefit. But here now, it's not just for oneself, it would be also for parents and friends. Okay, they're close ones, but they're other people, right? So Gesha said, no, no, this counts as self. <laughs> this counts as uh, for, for, for your own ends. <laughs> it's included. Just give a ding, right? So this person would be a middling scope. So yeah. I think that's all the questions. We had only had this two, no? Lynn? Yeah. Yeah,你看都上大家了。基本基本基本上的基本上的了的呢。公路的他把东西是,你就没去上吧,公路的了。他的呢,公路他把东西呢,你去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去去
And so then the Geshe was also making a distinction of uh, the middling being from the point of view of uh, what kind of view is cultivated or is the one person, this person is capable to cultivate. So there's one person who is able to meditate by because of realizing uh, the absence of a self-sufficient, substantially existent self. Yeah, works with that. There will be a, a, a small middling being. And then there's somebody who uh, understands an emptiness uh, as presented by the, the schools of the Svatantikas and below. Yeah, so for example, the Chidamatra emptiness. Yeah? So one of these kind of uh, 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 schools, they're already presenting an emptiness and he kind of understands that or works with that and cultivates the mind in connection to this kind of teaching. There will be a middling middling being. And then you have somebody who is uh, actually following the presentation of emptiness according to Nagarjuna and his uh, spiritual offspring. So in other words, the actual Madhyamikas, the actual Prasangika view, which is uh, the, the subtle presentation of, of, of selflessness, which is the actual presentation of emptiness. And so uh, understands that, uh, that kind of presentation uh, and is cultivating his mind on, uh, along these lines. Yeah? So that would be then, from that point of view, a middling being, but a great middling being. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sibetella Dunga like, I need to be sure you've got a shit fast one. 
Nemo Langanese, Langa Dembo, the Yavashin, Wada. Tell her the Nanguadens, the Tare Yavashin, Wada. Tarvasajida. Those that you would drink Langa Jimba, Yamisha, Langa Jimba, Jimba, Shivisha Yavacha, Yenea, and that was the Nizit Shivisha Murida, the Yard, Dread, Yaya, Yarta Ebila. Okay, so the, the actual path of uh, the, uh, the uh, being of the middle school um, is uh, first of all that this person uh, is, uh, as, as the text itself, uh, the, the, the verse itself said, uh, that it is somebody who turns away from the happiness of existence or of samsara, yeah? turns uh, uh, its back on this kind of happiness of existence. So this is really an interesting uh, formulation because it doesn't say that uh, the suffering of existence says the happiness of existence. Yeah? So uh, the, the happiness of existence uh, of, of samsara, the bliss or the, the joy of, of samsara is also an object of abandonment. It's something that we need to turn away from. Yeah? So not just like, uh, like uh, before, the uh, small being turning away from the suffering of existence, but also from the joy of existence we need to turn away from. So that's the uh, 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 actually an expression of how everything is in the nature of suffering and therefore it is indicating the true sufferings. And these true sufferings then become the main object of abandonment, what this person wants to get rid of, what this person wants to abandon, yeah? wants to get rid of these true sufferings and understands the causes of these true sufferings, where this all came from, the uh, karma and afflictions, and also that then, the cause of that unwanted suffering becomes then also an object of abandon abandonment. Um, so this person, uh, uh, the actual path of such a person of the middle slope would therefore uh, uh, definitely include that this person is uh, meditating on uh, or becoming, reflecting on becoming clear about the drawbacks of the true sufferings, yeah? what, what it means to be in the true sufferings, uh, uh, what this would mean for you, or what negative sides this has, what drawbacks, and uh, would then also think about how these true sufferings that have only drawbacks and these no one, how they come about, how they arise, what's the cause of that? Why is this there in the first place? Yeah, what did cause that? So you think about the true origins and the way how the two origins are producing that suffering. Yeah, so, uh, so this is something uh, uh, that uh, that person would definitely kind of uh, 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 dwell on and uh, make a, a main object of cultivation of reflection of, uh, of a meditation, the true sufferings and the drawbacks of that and how the true origins are generating the true sufferings and so forth. And again, uh, within this kind of practice, you would then again have many different personalities, of course, uh, they would all be, be beings of a, a middling scope, but uh, some of them uh, can kind of uh, clearly uh, reason or clearly uh, penetrate this kind of presentations for others it stays a little bit more vague that some people for example let's say looking into the uh, uh, the two origins which are the uh, afflictions they can kind of somehow dwell on or, or, or reflect about or, or cultivate with regard to the coarser levels of the afflictions but not with the subtler ones they don't get that or this doesn't speak to them or so forth so you have again people with different capacity uh, engaging into this kind of uh, uh, practice. Yeah? So in the end, in order to understand these, uh, these true origins and how, uh, how they generate this, the true sufferings and so forth, and even within the true origins, how, how, how there's a, a, a different levels, like karma is generated from the afflictions and the afflictions have a root affliction and so forth. So all of this uh, can only be actually understood by realizing emptiness by understanding emptiness yeah without understanding emptiness there's no way that you can actually understand the true origins yeah? especially the afflictions within the two origins you don't understand what is this this root this ignorance so you need to understand emptiness in order to penetrate the uh, presentation of uh, the true origins uh, then you understand uh, uh, emptiness then at the same time, you can then also understand, having understood what are, the, what are the true origins, you can understand that there's a true cessation, that it doesn't have to be like that. And you also understand from this realization of emptiness, or this understanding of emptiness, uh, what is the antidote to the true origins, which is uh, uh, a wisdom that is uh, realizing selflessness. And this then becomes actually the true path. 
Yeah, so all of this is uh, uh, connected uh, back, all, connect, all, this, all of this connects back to the topic of emptiness and uh, to understanding this topic and to penetrating this topic of em emptiness. So once you have understood that there's a true path that ended your two thoughts, uh, true origins that you understand by way of understanding emptiness, then you understand there can also be a true cessation where all of this stops. So all of this in, in the end is anchored or is, a, is, a, is a connected to, links back to uh, the topic of emptiness and understanding of emptiness. Right, yeah, that's a question. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you assume it's Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's three here. Hi there. I just uh, maybe wrote something down in my notes from earlier when we talked about small, middling, 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 and great middling. <laughs> um, so I'm going to ask the question, um, can you be on the path of accumulation, have uncontrived renunciation, but still only really be able to do the practice of avoiding the 10 non-virtuous actions and therefore be a small middling? Because I thought that Geshe said that wasn't possible. That sounds like it should be possible. Uh, so the question seems to be like, can you be on the path uh, of accumulation and so forth, which means you would have an uncontrived form of um, mind of definite emergence and still only be capable of doing the practice of obeying the general emergence actions. Is that the question? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, cool. Did I would choose to argue that the kare jibu tingi la kare chu ting chang chimbu yorba? Da <laughs> Kümmer mal jemba gene, dann take mengi lam tops. Toba yang, kongi nüber chung chung ginsam, lam di la dene, kong mige mige chu bunge ge zu dem adok chenu chi nyam chi tu gumares. Di da bu yorbe. Di chi se jamares, di yamares, di ne yamares. Kon ninjung samba ke sa sona, din shi ne zu de mese nyam ne ma cha na. Quote Mm-hmm. Okay, so in a nutshell, this is not possible. Yeah, you cannot be on uh, on the path of accumulation and so forth, uh, and be only capable of uh, doing a practice of ethical discipline obeying the ten non virtuous actions. That was the question, right? So, so why is that? So we have seen that there is people who either are only able to do the ten, uh, obeying the ten non virtuous actions, or practicing with regard to the four noble truths or people who are already dealing with the emptiness which is uh, or, or that are realizing uh, selflessness. So the point is this, in order to get on a Hinayana path of accumulation, you would have to have an uncontrived mind of definite emergence. Yeah? So uh, an uncontrived mind that definitely wants to get out of samsara and attain, attain uh, 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 sorry, uh, liberation. This is only possible by way of a practice of the Four Noble Truths. Yeah, so you have to penetrate this teaching on the Four Noble Truths in order to get a mind that is uh, like a, what is called an uncontrived mind, a spontaneous mind uh, of uh, um, uh, definite emergence or of renunciation uh, that would bring you on, uh, on a path of accumulation. So this is a person that is way beyond uh, just doing an ethical discipline of uh, of a banning ten or virtuous actions this is somebody who has actually completely dealt with the topic of the four noble truths. And uh, 
what you need also in order to generate such a spontaneous uh, mind of definite emergence is not only that you have penetrated the form of a truth, but it, this is based on a mind that is a union of calm abiding and special insight. Yeah? So only in that context you can attain such a uh, spontaneous uh, uh, mind of definite emergence. So if somebody is only able to practice the, uh, 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 the ethical discipline that abandons the ten of actions, he's far from any of that. He hasn't understood the four noble truths. He hasn't penetrated that. He doesn't have a unit of calm abiding special insight. He is definitely not a, 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 a spontaneous or uncontrived form of mind of definite emergence. So what is who is this person then actually? Yeah. So because this is a, a person of of the of the of the middling scope. So this is somebody who has the attitude that wants to get liberated from samsara. So this is somebody who has, has the attitude, wants to get liberated from samsara, wants to attain liberation, wants to attain nirvana, but has not understood the form of truth. So where does he get this, this wish for, for liberation from? On the basis of blind faith. Yeah? This person simply feels like that's a good idea kind of thing. Yeah? So he has blind faith, he has not penetrated the, 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 the presentation of the form of truth. And still is, is feeling like he would like to be uh, liberated and therefore is practicing the 10 no virtues actions. But it has not penetrated the actual presentation why you need to get out of samsara. This would be the form of the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Chimamaimba so in the same vein, you can uh, uh, extend this to uh, the, to um, uh, an attitude of the great scope, yeah. So uh, aiming at uh, uh, enlightenment or um, at the Mahayana and so forth. So all of this is based on great compassion. Yeah, without great compassion, you cannot enter into the Mahayana. So that's 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 the that's the foundation of the Mahayana. Yeah? From great compassion, Bodhi, from Bodhi, the Mahayana. Uh, so great compassion will never come about for any one of us if we have not penetrated the four noble truths. Yeah? If you don't understand the four noble truths, and within that, for example, have understood with regard to yourself that you have true sufferings in your continuum, and that they have causes, and that you need to get them out of your system, out of your, out of your continuum, you will never feel this for others. You will never be able to extend this to others and feel like that they are in a horrible suffering situation and need to get liberated out of samsara if you don't feel this for yourself. But that's exactly the great compassion, that you have the compassion for sinning beings that are lost to some sort, and you want to liberate them out of that, out of compassion. So this will never come about if you have not identified this within, within yourself. So you need to come so far that you hold as, as the object of abandonment, it means what you really desperately need to get rid of, the true sufferings and the true origins. Yeah? So for this, you have to have understood what is all there inside of you that is true or to true, true sufferings and what is the causes for that and in order to look for what are the causes for the true sufferings you first have to see faults you have to you have to you have to you have to see the, uh, the true sufferings as faulty 
This will not come about by itself. It will only come about by knowing them, with having studied about them, having heard about the, the faults and drawbacks of the two subjects. Yeah? So if we have not studied and have come to know the, know the four, the four, the four uh, uh, noble truths, and especially the drawbacks of, the, of, of suffering, and then what causes that, and this can be ended in the true cessation, and there's a true path for that. So without knowing that, we will never ever be able to identify this inside of us, want to get rid of it for ourselves, uh, and, and get, a, 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 how to say, an excellent or a, a very well-functioning level of the mind of definite emergence. So I'm, I'm using this kind of strange phrase, uh, Ogesha used a certain phrase in Tibetan in order to distinguish it from um, spontaneous, or what do you say, uh, non-artificial, uncontrived which, uh, 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 mind of definite emergence. So we don't need that. We don't need an uncontrived, we don't want that actually, we, we don't need an uncontrived level of mind of definite emergence. We need a very well-developed, very well-functioning level of that in order to then build on that the great compassion by turning this inner uh, in understanding and feeling to all senior beings. Yeah? And as long as we don't have that fully, not fully fledged, but uh, but uh, very well developed uh, functioning level of a mind of definite emergence with regard to ourselves, the great compassion will never come about. And this, this level of functioning mind of definite emergence will only come from having uh, understood and worked with the form of truth and having especially uh, seen the drawbacks of samsara and the truth's uh, sufferings. So that's Geshe will just make this, make this clear that you can uh, uh, bring this to the next level, what we're talking about here, that uh, you have to have to understand the formal truth also with regard to great compassion, which is the complete basis for the Mahayana. That's all. Thank you, Geshe. Thank you, Bhaktarjin. I think Laura has her hand up, so I just thought... Yeah, I'd that's true. So, uh, okay. so, sorry, yes, it's the last question. Okay. Um, but actually, it's to you. Uh, definite emergence, does that, is that another term for renunciation? Yeah, so that's, that's, that's a translator question, actually. So the, uh, the, literally, it says that. Literally, it's the attitude of definite emergence. Okay. And actually, Tibetan has a word that means renunciation, but it is not this one. But okay. uh, very often, this, this rather kind of wordy phrase of the mind of definite emergence, uh, which I think Jeffrey Hawkins uses, if I'm not wrong, is uh, to say it as renunciation. Okay. But uh, um, it has its own problems, this word, and so uh, anyway, literally it's that. Literally it's okay. the mind of definite um, Then my, my question is, if, um, if you have developed the um, mind of definite emergence, I mean, can it really be possible for a lay person to to do this or like is it really just i mean you, you know it, i mean I, I, is, I seem to think that for definite emergence to really be real you've got to be a monastic person you can't be a lay person mm -hmm. okay so the question is can you can you de uh, develop a, a, a mind of definite emergence as a lay person or do you have to be a monastic okay yeah, ああ、で、ヨンゲザマ。ああ、で、ヨンマ。でね、マレス。ラブジュナミケラチャバチェンドステラ。ニジュサンバラ、ニジュミジラブジュンゴマレス。ニジュサンバチェオズラ、ラ
So Gesha would not agree with that. He, uh, he, he would say like uh, that it's not a question of getting ordained or not being, being ordained or not uh, or, or being ordained or not being ordained. Uh, the, uh, to to have this uh, attitude of uh, definite emergence, but uh, the attitude of definite emergence comes simply from uh, reflecting on the drawbacks of samsara or of the true sufferings or of suffering in general, uh, and seeing the benefits of liberation. Yeah? So that's that's what you need to do. If you're ordained or not, it doesn't matter. So whoever is a living being needs to look at how there is all these drawbacks in true sufferings and in samsara and so forth, and uh, get disgusted with that and see the benefits of liberation. And out of this understanding comes a mind that is uh, wishing for definite emergence to get out of samsara and get into, into uh, liberation. That's what, what this mind is actually about. Uh, so, that's, uh, so anyone who does that uh, uh, can generate this mind of, of definite emergence. So you don't have to be ordained for that. You have to do the uh, what you have to do is you have to think about the topics of samsara and the benefits of, of liberation. So, uh, so then why getting ordained? So the ordination is there in order for uh, people who want to go that path to have a, a conducive environment for doing right that for uh, actually developing this mind of definite emergence. Yeah. So it's not because you're ordained you have that. But uh, uh, you are ordained in order to have the best environment to develop this mind of death emergence. Okay? Yeah. Just on the team, the case of children is a severe dela gap choice. So they do make them by the shiggy on it. Sit down what it is, severe dela gap choice, so they do make them by the shiggy on it. The bell, less like the dear kind is not good to them by the shiggy on it. ど、たにせれてけかんさんごはんにでけしげ。おでだなんでんけ。うん。かし、ろしさんてにさ、たるもてにんごろでけしげ。うん。おでねでんじゃんかさできむりすらぐやです。で、ちでしょげしむらが
Tavan Tavan Namges, Tandu Namge, the Kumjet Soderes. Given drink a lamb, you shun she, given drink a lamb, you saw the dearest, the Langa Josadi. That kind of shun she that would dare, then the Yala Juni, the Damashin, the two doing good to make the Malakunji, the men that soon do you go around. Do you Tarba is a kind of so then further on the commentary continues uh, to talk about uh, the path uh, of the Four Noble Truths and expresses this as being the main object to be cultivated by those who are aiming at liberation. And uh, further on, it says it is the life pillow, the, 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 the lifeblood of the main practice of the uh, path of the uh, being of middle capacity. And also the 12 links of dependent arising are gathered into these four noble truths. Yeah? So uh, 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 you can make the connection of the 12 uh, uh, links of dependent arising uh, and find them in the four noble truths. Um, so further on, it says, uh, it says that uh, the, the, the main objects to be understood or to be penetrated by somebody who is aiming at a liberation uh, are definite as the two. And so then it uses a technical term of Gunjang, which is uh, the, the thoroughly, like, don't, don't be afraid, the, the word is simply the thoroughly afflicted class and the completely pure, pure class. So what this wants to say is that uh, the thoroughly afflicted class is including the true sufferings and true origins, in, in short, and the completely pure class is including the true uh, cessations and true, uh, true paths. This one. Six. Oh yeah, that's the carsing dos, and the wama the carsing dos, no? Tambolas. Two. That. Quarching <laughs> Okay, so then uh, having said that uh, somebody who is aiming at liberation has as, as, uh, as, uh, as definitely as, as main objects to be understood, these two, the thoroughly afflicted class and the, and the completely pure class, then it says that in the thoroughly afflicted class we have uh, uh, the, the cause, causal parts, which is the, uh, the, the true origins, which is that which binds you, or I say, you say, and chains you, can put you into chains, sh shackles you. So, so that's, that's, uh, that's the first part, the causal part within the thoroughly afflicted class, and this is the true origins, that what kind of uh, binds you or enchains you. And then the next, uh, the, the second part is the, the resultant part, which is that which is in chains, that, uh, that has been bound. Uh, and so this is the, uh, the true sufferings. The true sufferings is that what is bound due to the binder, which is the, the true origins. So that's, that's the two cause and, and, and uh, effect uh, parts in the thoroughly fitted class. And then uh, with regard to the second part, that was, was the completely pure class, here you have on the one hand the, uh, the object of attainment, the true cessations, 
And then that which attains, the active part that attains that, which is the two halves. Yeah, so also here we have uh, these two, two parts in the, in the thoroughly, uh, in, the, in the completely pure class. So, so in this way, we have these kind of uh, four uh, uh, truths included in this uh, uh, thoroughly afflicted and the completely pure class by way of cause and effect, and that what is to be attained, that what attains. So to some extent, this is a presentation of cause and effect with regard to what needs to be abandoned, what's to be adopted. But then actually, if you look at the way that it is described in the form of a truth, it doesn't come like that. Yeah? It doesn't start with a cause and then comes a result and it comes another cause and comes another result. But instead we have this, uh, this a sequence of true sufferings, which is actually a result. So it should be coming later. But anyway, the presentation is first the true sufferings, then the true uh, origins, then the true cessations, and then the true path. And this is not a presentation on the basis of cause and effect. This is a presentation of practice. This is the sequence in which a yogi meditates on that. That's the <laughs> Uh, so Gesha says, uh, we ran out of time. That's it. Yeah, nice,ピンシュとあるじゃんちゃんまんごしゅうとかさんまんごとさんたんまんごしゅうとかすけなど。ね、そうそうもね、じゃばいんな、だ。ピンシュねずしや、かぶしちゃって、しゅうしげし
uh, for example, in comparison to any kind of other practice that we might do, might not do like uh, like uh, saying certain mantras or or reading sutras and so forth. Yeah? None of this can compare with looking at this four noble truths again and again and really dig this this teaching. Yeah? This is very 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 uh, uh, essential. So to follow this kind of presentation, like this first, the very first thing that the Buddha ever ever taught, and then further on also to to follow like what uh, what the great masters of the past like. Uh, like the, the conqueror's son uh, Shandideva uh, was teaching, or what Atisha was teaching, or what uh, Nagarjuna and his little offspring uh, were teaching, Chandakiri were teaching, now it's on top and so forth. So they're not, not looking at what these masters had to say and then engaging into all kinds of practices or maybe high practices and stuff like this. Yeah? This, this is not leading anywhere. Yeah? So we have to focus on the, the central stuff first. Yes, Adisha said, I'm going to tell you that. Uh,ペディタ、サンミチョバチェンジョスマサンミチョバチェ。タペラデンデシネ、サンケゲテンバデトゥタダバデネイデアリシャカリニバチャデヨです。タ、アディシャカチェディカリディソンロバス。タナガ
Sono mai in basso la di Miki Ucci di Tango Do e Tavici Chapures, che vuoi chiungere la di Tango Do. Sono mai in basso la di Tango Do. Pado Tani in Dobra Ches, di Nittanzi, le ha da Nyumose Do e Tavici Chapures. Tamatashi Quindo basso la di Tamatata di Kona, che vuoi chiungere la di Tango Do, dai, le ha da Tavici di Tango, che vuoi chiungere la di Tango Do. Ciao. Sono me, ma tambo dos, tambo bene, ma non ti chiudo la mia yongo resa. Chiaron giga, chiaron giga, sono giga, pesce una volta tambo di detrana. Non so, 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 is uh, that he is uh, quoting a verse from uh, the great master Arya Deva. Uh, so this comes out of his works, uh, the 400 stanzas, I think it's called, yeah, the 400s. Uh, so in this text, the 400s, there is this, this verse which uh, roughly uh, is saying the following, in the beginning, uh, you need to uh, turn away from that which is not married. And what this is referring to is you need to uh, 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 train your mind by abandoning the tone with no, uh, ten non virtuous actions. So the ten non virtuous actions is that which is not merit, which is not virtue, which is not meritorious. Yeah? So we need to turn away from that in the beginning. So that's, that's the first thing, that's the instruction here. Uh, and then the next one is then you can uh, also turn away from grasping for yourself and so forth. Yeah? So in other words, indicating the afflictions and so uh, that you uh, need to work with that on a middling level. Yeah? You need to turn away from afflictions and uh, karma and so forth. And then finally, on the base of that, and, and the rest of the verse it says, and then you can go to the Mahayana. Yeah, and enter, enter into a kind of the, the, the capacity and practice of the being of the great school. So that's what the Master Ayadeva is saying here. But the point is here that this is the very verse that his own is constantly, uh, very often kind of in, uh, I say introducing in his teaching, and even in the beginning of his teaching, yeah? because it shows this sequence, that this clear instruction that we have to start with something like a bang to no merchant's actions, like being of the small scope, and then uh, work our way up through the middle scope to the great scope and so forth. Ok, da quando sta de chiusa, si è anche nato. Che ci sei sorry, sorry, now we came a little bit late. <laughs> ok, ok. Ciao, Senjo, Rimboce, Maggi, Pana, Gigante, Gabbani, Amba, Mervaia, Pone, Gondo, Kerwash, Tony, Dava, Rimboce, Maggi, Pana, Gigante, Gabbani, Amba, Mervaia. May the precious Supreme Boy Chita not be born and rise, may the risen not decline, but increase more and more. And then, I would like to do the long life prayer of his honors, but I can't see it. <laughs> okay, in the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good, all powerful, Shin resident in Yat, so please remain until the samsara ends. Uh, you oh, yeah. will call the viewers more away who serve as the bounty bearer of all sustaining, preserving, spreading Manjunath's victorious doctrine, who masterfully accomplished my gifts and prayers, honoring the three jewels, protect of myself and others through yourselves. Please, please, you have more. Oh, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for the you. extra time. And, uh, <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy yeah. New Year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Tachin. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you again soon. Thank you. Is it the Tibetan New Year? No. Oh, do it in New Year in February. Ah, in February, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. We want to meet each other before before New Year. That's that's why it says it. Okay, you're right. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. See you next year. Yeah. <laughs> February. We start again at the beginning of February. So we're looking forward to it. Thank you. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.